So we believe that for deployment of any automated vehicle technology, there has to be some element of remote operation involved in it. It might be assistance, it might be supervision, monitoring, and to some extent, even driving in emergency situations. Full autonomy level five is much further than most of the industry ever expected it to be. And the amazing thing about remote driving is that it allows us to reach that point one step at a time. Automation is increasing across all uh, transport domains. How do you regulate automation versus remote operation and where's the balance there? I think it's quite important for government and the regulator to make it very clear, not just in regulation, but also in public communications, the difference between automated driving, assisted driving and remote driving. The challenges of uh, remote driving, connectivity is the one that people are probably most obviously thinking about because you can't even have remote driving without the connectivity in the first place. And the human factors element also really shined through. One of the reasons why we still have so many un unanswered questions is we don't have a lot of deployments, right? So I think it's just really important that we keep having these conversations and making sure that we don't try and, I guess, reinvent the wheel where processes are worked really well. The issues with the current law, there are essentially three of them. One is that the current law is very uncertain and uncertain Uncertainty creates problems for worthwhile projects. And there's also an issue with accountability. Should the driver, the remote driver, be responsible for things that are outside their control? From a UK civil aviation perspective, there are many challenges. One that we think is significant is the societal expectation of flying without a pilot on board the aircraft. At least in the legislation as it stands, if it's remotely piloted, there is a remote pilot. And the starting point is you've just taken the role of the pilot and you've just moved them to a different location. And one of the real challenges is going to be, well, actually, is their involvement less than a traditional pilot? How much of this can be handled with the existing regulations and technical standards, and how much of it do you need to write new stuff? Technologically, some of the big things are communications and that connectivity point. What's an acceptable delay between me knowing what's happening on the vessel and me being able to operate it and make a decision? And also the impact of weather. If there is business and a revenue opportunity, then a mobile network operator is very interested in delivering a connectivity solution. It's not just latency of the communications channel, it's the uplink and the downlink. And there are different quality service requirements necessary for remote driving based upon which you're talking about. For us, automated driving system is the focus, but the remote operation, we also see it as something that can be very helpful. And we see that remote assistance is allowed according to the new European regulation. The dilemma we have is the speed at which an international change takes place with those regulations and the speed at which a domestic change in regulations takes place. If we're going to move this forward, there's an openness to change that's required and that demands an exchange of knowledge, an exchange of skills, an exchange of ideas to address new problems. One of the ways that a cross-domain approach will help enable human factors is understanding how the remote operator's situation awareness, human-machine interface, workload, issues around fatigue and distraction can be tackled. In our view, if you want to create a scalable safety assurance approach, everything has to come back to your ODD definition. When it comes to remote driving, the connectivity attribute of ODD becomes more fundamental. Connectivity discussions are happening in isolation, but they're not coming together with the autonomy discussions. In terms of our learnings from all of this, both with industry and with updating the regulations, is collaboration.